My wife, a 39-year-old woman, and I, a 40-year-old man, have been married for 17 years. We have three beautiful daughters aged 15, 13, and 11. Our relationship started back in school, and we have been together for about 23 years. I don't have much information, but here's what I know. Three days ago, my wife returned from work upset and excited. She quickly packed a bag with things for the night and left. I only know about this situation because our eldest daughter was present at home and witnessed it. I tried to talk to her, but she was overwhelmed with emotions and could not formulate her thoughts. She seemed to be on the verge of panic. Unfortunately, she didn't respond to our text messages or phone calls. I immediately contacted her parents, who eventually responded, assuring us that my wife was under their care and asking us to be patient and understanding. This is the end of the information. In an attempt to gather more detailed information, I also tried to contact her sister, brother, and one of her close work colleagues. Her brother said he didn't know anything, and her colleague confirmed that she was at work in the morning but had already left by lunchtime. That was the limit of her knowledge three days ago. Since then, my wife has not been in touch, even with our children. No one provides any information, and I, who am fully responsible for our three daughters, have to navigate the situation without her. The children are constantly asking about the situation, looking for answers about the whereabouts of their mother, and all I can answer is that she's with her grandparents. We have no choice but to remain patient and understanding in this uncertain time. I have a strong desire to spontaneously gather the children and suddenly go there without warning anyone in advance. It's only a three-hour drive to my destination, and the state of uncertainty I'm in right now is simply unbearable. The children think that we had a big fight and are going to get divorced, but this is not so. We never quarrel, and our children know that. It is difficult for me to understand the situation, and I hope that someone will be able to provide logical clarity. My current emotional state has driven me into a cycle of repetitive thoughts as I try to cope with everything on my own without her. Press, if one of your loved ones passed away, wouldn't your spouse or family be the first to whom you would inform about it? Perhaps some trauma of the past has surfaced, but if I were in such a situation, my instinct would tell me that first of all, I need to seek comfort from my wife. We were at a complete loss, not understanding anything and not having any meaning. I, along with my daughters, remain in a state of uncertainty because we all remain in the unknown without any information. I am tormented by anxiety, fear, anger, and many other emotions that can be experienced in such a situation. Is there anyone who can give a logical explanation of how someone could leave their family without a trace? Last night was sleepless for me. As for my father-in-law, he didn't contact me last night. Following the advice of many, I still decided to contact the police. Unfortunately, this action entailed a lot of problems, which I will not delve into. To my shock, it turned out that my wife has been in an extramarital affair for a long time, perhaps more than two years. By a tragic coincidence, on Tuesday, another man involved in this connection had a heart attack, and that evening he tragically died. It seems that my mother-in-law and possibly my daughter were aware of this situation and hid it all the time. My wife still hasn't contacted me or our daughters. I try my best to shield them from this information, but I do not know what to do next. This situation is overwhelming me, and I feel that I am close to my limit. I do not know how to move on. My mind inevitably takes over, plunging me into bouts of deep sadness. They are followed by violent outbursts of anger, sometimes simultaneously. Sleep becomes an elusive goal, and every day I wander aimlessly around the city, feeling like just a shell of myself, trying to make sense of the situation. I dive into the study of various abbreviations, and Friday became an important turning point, my personal D-Day. At first, I thought that my wife's infidelity lasted two years, but now it seems very likely that she went far beyond this period. The man she betrayed me with, known as AP, had known her for quite a long time. Unfortunately, his premature death from a heart attack led to this devastating discovery. Currently, with the help of my eldest daughter, I am collecting information on some issues that I am not ready to share publicly yet. Initially, I wasn't going to continue sharing news about my situation, but the huge amount of support and advice I received from many people turned out to be therapeutic to some extent. It saddens me to realize that there are many other people who have experienced or are experiencing similar pain. Now, to explore possible options, I consulted with two different lawyers, 
both yesterday and today, and also contacted several therapeutic services. I'm asking for advice on one specific issue that can help me improve my sleep. My wife occupied a huge place in my life. She was not only my best friend from school but also a loving mother of our three beautiful daughters. Our love was so strong that we had inside jokes and secret handshakes. But now, it seems to me that all this has disappeared. Every memory of the years we spent together, every milestone we reached, every laugh we shared, now brings only great sadness and despair. It's paralyzing. It seems that everything we had meant nothing to her, and now I have to look to the future without her. And against the background of all this, an obsessive question begins to creep into my thoughts. How could you? An unquenchable and irresistible anger is gnawing at me. I vent my irritation by screaming into the pillow and pounding tirelessly on the mattress until my hands start to hurt from cramps. This terrible picture repeats itself over and over again. Sleep comes only as a result of severe fatigue, but even in a nap, I am abruptly woken up, and the painful mind games begin again. I dedicate the remaining energy that I manage to gather to my girls, who have taken on the role of educators, taking on the responsibilities of parents. It's unfair to put such a burden on them. How did you all sleep after you found out about the betrayal? I wonder how you coped with the deep silence and emptiness of the night, being alone with your thoughts. In light of recent events, I realized that the priority of sleep, in addition to my daughters, is extremely important for my well-being. But I'm struggling to find rest. It's been a little over a week since I found out about my wife's infidelity, and I recently found out that it lasted for more than four years, although the exact timing remains unclear. It is likely that the situation began with emotional tension and turned into a physical quarrel. I'm intrigued by what role the pandemic and subsequent closures could have played in this, although I'm not sure I'll ever find the answers. Anyway, yesterday my relatives unexpectedly arrived, who from the very beginning of this nightmare sheltered my wife at home. But this state of affairs is completely unfair, since they spent only 15 minutes saying hello to our three daughters, after which they asked for a personal conversation with me. As expected, the conversation turned out to be long. I would prefer not to discuss the entire dialogue in this post, but to put it briefly, my wife wants to return home, but she is worried about the consequences of her actions and she is afraid to face the reality of what she has done. In addition, her parents put a lot of effort into finding out if I intended to file for divorce and spent a lot of time trying to convince me to forgive my wife and restore our marriage. It was noticeable that they were very ashamed and embarrassed, but at the same time, their ultimate goal was to ensure that my wife left their house. The conversation between us remained polite and respectful. I must admit that I lied. I told them that I was not sure about my future plans as I was seriously considering a divorce, but I'm afraid that if I talk about it, my wife will never be honest with me. Despite this possibility, I still want her to sit down at the negotiating table with me and if possible give detailed explanations. We have been married for more than 17 years, together since high school. We have three children. During our life together, we have created many memories and experienced so much. It's important for me that she looks me in the eye and tells me everything. In addition, I want my children to understand that I gave their mother the opportunity to clarify her actions, I gave her the opportunity to apologize and solve everything together as responsible adults. I constantly strive to set a positive example for my children, but sometimes I doubt whether I'm approaching this correctly. According to my lawyer, I cannot prevent my wife from legally entering our house, which I strongly object to. At the moment, my daughters and I have finally established a pleasant daily routine. So, I put forward a requirement that I thought would be impossible to fulfill for some time. I said that my wife has the opportunity to return home provided that she openly and honestly talks to me personally. This conversation should consist of her looking into my eyes and telling me all the details of her infidelity without any hesitation or further dishonesty. In addition, I asked her to also meet with our daughters to personally apologize and answer any questions they may have. I think it would be fair, given that they are already aware of the situation. It is important to note that from a legal point of view, she has the right to come home whenever she wants and is not obliged to fulfill any requirements. But if she's afraid of running into us, I'm thinking about using this situation to our advantage. I doubt whether this approach is right or wrong from a moral point of view. I want to make it clear that my intentions are not dishonest or misleading. I just have doubts about living together at the moment, 
and I would prefer, if possible, to postpone it. In addition, our state requires a mandatory 90-day waiting period before the start of the divorce process, which makes it inevitable that my wife will return home. If eventually both of us will have to return to our work duties and life will continue despite the existing difficulties, my main goal in delaying this situation is to be able to plan and prioritize for my mental and emotional well-being. It is worth noting that my wife corresponded with the girls, wanting to avoid divorce and repeatedly apologizing to them. I was shown texts, and my wife asks about me every day. The truth about what she did to all of us is starting to affect her, especially in recent days. I do not know what to do in this situation. Was I stupid to make certain demands? It looks like my wife will be coming home sooner rather than later anyway. At the moment, I am confident in the correctness of the path I have chosen. I am not shocked by this turn of events, as I always assumed that sooner or later, this would happen. My main task is to make the best decision for my daughters and for myself to move on. But there was a glimmer of hope when my wife finally returned home yesterday after a long wait throughout the week. I usually greet her at the door with warm hugs and kisses, but this time there was an indescribable awkwardness between us. To my surprise, she came up to me first and tried to hug me without saying a word, but I instinctively turned away. The feeling was somehow unreal, as if we were pretending that nothing had happened. When she calmed down, I began to persist consistently, asked her to share all the details with me, but she insisted again that she wasn't ready for this, just like during our previous phone conversation earlier that week. I stressed that her return home depends on how much she is willing to talk about the reasons for her absence for almost three weeks based on love for our family. Unfortunately, she just repeated that she wasn't ready for it yet. Although it cost me a huge effort to contain my emotions, I took several deep breaths, trying to regain calm. Unfortunately, my attempts were unsuccessful. After a long silence, I realized that I could no longer contain the truth. I said abruptly that she had been having a secret affair with her colleague for more than four years and was going to give up our relationship for him. Not only had she cut off all contact with her own family, but now she was standing in front of me without fulfilling one simple condition that I asked her to. In this regard, I have decided to divorce. At that moment, the situation took a strange turn. Her body language and facial expression clearly indicated that she did not know how much I was aware of her infidelities. She stared at me with wide eyes and then froze in the kitchen, staring at the floor and not saying a word. She was very calm. I was preparing for any reaction, for everything except this one. I was expecting an emotional outburst, perhaps a tearful confession, or even her outburst of anger when she completely blamed the betrayal on me. I even considered the possibility of a serious, calm conversation to sit down and sort everything out. But she didn't respond with any of the above. It was an unusual moment, unlike any I've encountered before. We stood in the kitchen, immersed in an eerie silence that seemed to last forever. She, like me, seemed to be at a loss. I was carefully preparing for any possible outcome of this skirmish. I diligently took notes, positioned myself in front of the mirror, mentally worked out various scenarios, but I was completely unprepared for such a turn of events that unfolded in front of me. At that moment, I made a spontaneous decision to talk about all the details of her infidelity, foolishly including my own conjectures in them. I told her about how she met another person, about her sister's role in this case, and even about what happened during the COVID period. Throughout my revelation, she remained motionless, her gaze never once met mine. As I continued, my anger intensified, fueled by her silence and inaction. Despite the fact that I tried to stay calm and avoid offensive attacks, my frustration grew. Eventually, I managed to regain my composure, but at that moment, I was again met with a prolonged and awkward silence. At that moment, anger was replaced by a feeling of deep sadness when I realized the seriousness of the situation. Having plucked up the courage, I asked her in a soft tone, what did I do to push her away? Did she really love me, and was the other person, AP, worth it? In response, I heard no words, no movements, no remorse, no explanations. She just stood there silently with her head down. I felt a lot of pain, this pain seemed to surpass D-Day in its magnitude. When I stood and looked at her, I doubted if I could even force myself to move. But then the situation changed for the worse. I didn't know our daughters were eavesdropping on the whole scene. 
I was to blame for behaving so stupidly. In recent weeks, I have been very diligent in setting priorities and putting them first, but at that moment, I let my emotions get the better of me and didn't think about where they were. As a result, our eldest daughter stormed down the stairs, throwing all the accumulated anger at me. My wife hurried up the stairs, closing the bedroom door behind her. That's the situation we found ourselves in. All night, I heard my wife crying until I finally fell asleep. Only our youngest daughter tried to comfort her, and everyone else preferred to keep their distance. If I have the courage, I plan to offer her to live with her sister until we get a divorce. But we must admit that this is still her home, and undoubtedly, coexistence in such conditions will be unpleasant for all of us. I have to admit that I was wrong about my wife, and all of you were right. I underestimated the importance of the years we lived together, shared memories, and experienced changes. I was sure that she would fall on her knees and ask for forgiveness. I was completely convinced that she would confess to her sins committed over the past four years and take off the burden of guilt. This is the same woman who once returned to the farmer's market because she found that she had received an extra ten dollars in change. But it seems that we are of no value in her eyes. Maybe I never appreciated it. So, what should we do next? There was an incredibly uncomfortable atmosphere at home today. My children and I tried to continue our everyday life as it has been for the last two weeks, but it became clear that this was impossible. All I want is to get through this whole ordeal as quickly as possible. Divorce, uncomfortable conversations, inevitable arguments and fights, unnecessary drama, for those who have experienced living together with an ex-partner, how did you cope with it, especially when it comes to children? There is not a single moment when I would not like to vent my frustration by shouting. Right now, I feel too depressed and emotional. This is a constant struggle for the preservation of mental strength, especially for the sake of the girls. I'm not sure that I will be able to maintain such a state for the next three months. Given that studies will resume before this situation is resolved, it seems like this is the reality of my life. I am in a difficult emotional situation, and this has been the case since my wife returned home and I found out the truth about her actions. For the sake of my daughters, I try my best to pretend that everything is fine. I try to say and think the right things, but today, I have to be honest. Tonight, I was depressed and lost control of my emotions. The divorce papers have already been filed, but my wife has not yet hired a lawyer. I try to be patient and take a delicate approach to the situation, hoping that the divorce will be indisputable and we will cope with it ourselves. But after tonight, I'm not sure it's still possible. Currently, our life together involves living together on weekdays, but on Friday evening, my wife goes to her sister's and only comes home on Sunday evening. Despite the fact that the sister's place of residence is relatively close to our family home, due to traffic jams, the road can take up to an hour. Lately, our daily routine basically boils down to avoiding each other while the girls and I try to maintain a normal environment. My wife tries to stay away. Despite this, in the evenings, we sometimes accidentally communicate, with the exception of my eldest daughter and wife, who are at odds with each other due to several strong quarrels. Considering the circumstances, it seems to me that it is better to keep this distance for now. I make a conscious effort to increase self-discipline, especially in dealing with my wife. It takes a lot of effort and willpower, but I try to keep our conversations brief, although always polite and respectful. But something else happened today. Usually, in the last couple of Fridays, she came home from work, packed her things, and went to her sister for the weekend before I came home. But today, it was different. She was waiting for me in the kitchen when I got home. I tried to just walk past her. She gently took my hand and asked if I was going to treat her like this just because she wasn't ready to discuss her infidelity. It's worth noting that this was the first time she had said a word about her infidelity since everything collapsed almost a month ago. I made an effort, really an effort, to restrain myself and leave. But at that moment, our daughters were not there, and a wave of anger swept over me. As a result, I pour out all my vices, pain, resentment, rage, and suffering on her. I can't even describe how long I continued to vent my anger. I completely lost track of time. Sometimes my voice got louder and more animated. In the end, I couldn't hold back any longer and broke down, revealing the full depth of my mental trauma and the daily torments that I experience. 
all the pent-up emotions and torments spilled out. Once I started, there was no stopping me. Naturally, tears flowed, and emotions overwhelmed me again. After that, I was angry with myself. I was making progress, but damn it, she was able to get into my soul. I let her influence me. I had a premonition that this would happen, and I was right. It's really disgusting. This situation has been building up for some time, and despite trying to vent my frustration in the gym, it wasn't enough. Suddenly, for the first time, my wife succumbed to her emotions and began to sob uncontrollably. I must admit that it gave me a strange sense of satisfaction that she was experiencing the same pain as me. Although I wouldn't have cared, some part of me found solace in the fact that she finally broke down. There seemed to be a glimmer of compassion in her. Surprisingly, during my outburst, she repeatedly asked for forgiveness. She burst into tears, apologizing repeatedly. Unable to stand it any longer, I quickly left the kitchen before she could say a word and resolutely asked her to leave me alone. That's how it happened. She wandered around the kitchen for a while and then went to her sister. The girls returned home about 30 minutes later, feeling that something had happened as it was difficult to hide. But I wasn't ready to discuss this issue yet, and I doubt whether they really need to be informed right now. The successes of the two younger ones have improved significantly, and I don't want to hinder their development. If I inform the elder about the current situation, it will only increase her anger, which I would also like to avoid. I am very sorry that I could not keep calm and just ignore my wayward wife. Looking back, I think she tried to start a conversation about her infidelity, but she failed, which led to my outburst. I began to think about her well-being. She lives in isolation, struggling with her thoughts, as almost everyone has turned away from her. You can argue that she deserves such treatment, and there is some truth in this, but she is still a person and the mother of my children. This situation makes me very sad, and I am very disappointed in myself. I apologize for another long outburst. As I even spoke about it to my brother, I'll try to start all over again on Monday. I am just a human being, and although at first I was pleased to express my dissatisfaction with her, now I am overwhelmed with regret. Should I send a message to my wife, or just leave it as it is? It is worth noting that we have all started therapy, which is a step in the right direction, but I must admit that this path is incredibly difficult, almost unbearable. This week has been a real roller coaster for me. It was filled with constant failures and unbearable moments. My wife was constantly by my side showered me with excessive kindness, and repeatedly apologized for her infidelity. She cried, overwhelmed me with her presence, even knocked on my door late at night, desperate to talk. I tried to distance myself from her, but sometimes I joined in the conversation when I wanted to. But on Wednesday night, I reached the limit and attacked her, demanding that she leave me alone. And then last night, it happened. It's been a little over a month since my future ex-wife returned home after a romance failed, and now the relationship has entered this uncomfortable territory. After the girls went to bed, she came into my room with a different approach than the one she had been showing all week. At first, I resisted, but eventually, we reached the garage and got into my car, avoiding a possible confrontation in front of the children. It was a long apology session. She told her version of events, and we sat there for almost three hours, not knowing how much to tell. I stayed up all night, listening to her sobs, and I couldn't sleep myself. Tears were streaming down my face as well. After that, I was covered with a fit of anger, forcing me to restrain myself so as not to break into the house and bring down a barrage of screams on her. Then the emotions turned into tears, followed by even more anger, creating an endless cycle throughout the evening. My wife continuously asked for forgiveness and gave me another chance, which further intensified my suffering. To get rid of the unbearable pain, I had to leave for several hours, distancing myself from her presence. Being in her company is painful, especially considering that her sister introduced her to this lover long before the start of the COVID pandemic, about five years ago. They began a professional relationship, seemingly devoid of any romantic intentions, but he held a prominent position in the company where she wanted to work, and eventually, thanks to his help, she began to work. It is important to note that their romance did not affect her decision to change her profession. However, after getting a new job, her desire to keep the relationship intensified. Gradually, their communication grew from an innocent correspondence to an exchange of photos, and eventually, 
shortly before the start of the COVID pandemic, physical intimacy occurred. Overwhelmed with guilt, she confided in her sister and said she wanted to confess it to me, but in the end, she chose to keep everything a secret and not tell anything. After a while, my wife mentioned that she met her lover shortly after the restrictions and isolation were lifted. Surprisingly, he contacted her again, and they resumed communication until physical contact resumed as soon as the businesses reopened. Although she repeatedly said that she stopped the affair because of guilt, she kept coming back to him, which led to the fact that the novel never ended. Interestingly, she even documented the details of her novel in a five-page chronology written by hand. When I listened to her attentively, she admitted that she made up stories about different things. She lied about weekend trips with friends, about trips to work, about being stuck in traffic, about problems with her parents, about her shopping trips, and the list goes on indefinitely. Everything was exactly as I suspected, and the number of lies was simply amazing. I naively believed every word she said, not doubting anything. But now, I realized that all these were just excuses to spend time with him. When she continued to reveal her deception, it got even worse for me. It seemed that everyone was right about her. But I was surprised that her affection for me did not weaken, even despite all these lies. Contrary to what I have often heard, she has never moved away. Although our intimate relationship has undergone some changes, they were not so alarming that I raised the alarm. But in the end, she confessed that she had fallen in love with another man, older and divorced, who was single and showered her with promises of generous gifts, luxury trips, and all the attention she could wish for. She began to dream of escaping from family obligations, believing that the thrill of communicating with him was too irresistible. She said she was tired of the monotonous routine of family life. She showed amazing openness, strong emotions, and obvious sincerity. I couldn't contain my emotions, and I burst into tears halfway through, as expected. It was painful to listen to. After the confession, she professed her love for me and her willingness to do everything possible to save our marriage. I have lived with her for more than half of my life, and I have developed an intuition when she behaves dishonestly. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it doesn't matter in the end. However, I managed to stay calm better than last week, although I still got angry and uttered a few offensive phrases. I couldn't resist teasing her partner, mentioning that he had a lot of women and she was just one of many whom he was ready to leave. This clearly touched her to the core. Countless thoughts raced through my head about the moment when she finally confessed. I considered various harsh remarks or ways to hurt her in return. Numerous answers eluded me that evening when I was at the peak of my emotions. But I was sure of one thing. I knew I was going to ask a question, if AP was alive and she had to choose between him and me, who would she choose? Her response was hesitant, and she muttered that it wasn't fair. Wanting to clarify the situation, I continued to discuss this issue, and in the end, she admitted that, of course, she would have chosen me. But I couldn't help but notice her initial indecision, from which I concluded that she was lying again. Overwhelmed with emotions, she began to cry violently, and from that moment, she was silent. We sat in the car for some time, her tears continued to flow. But feeling tired, I decided to inform her that we should divorce. I stress that it is important to maintain civil relations for the sake of our daughters, in order to be exceptional parents and actively participate in the lives of my children. I added the hope that despite the pain she caused me, she would have the decency to divorce fairly, in a decent environment. This will testify to her true love for me. The last words I said to her were taken from the internet, but please understand that I am not a vindictive person and did not intend to hurt her. It just seemed to me that this was a fitting conclusion to our story. Although I really meant every word of it, bending down, I kissed her gently on the forehead and told her that my love for her would last forever. After getting out of the car, I went to bed, thinking that this would be the end of it. But sleep wouldn't come to me, and now I can't find peace again. Today, uncertainty clouds my mind, and I reflect on what lies ahead. The window of opportunity to challenge the divorce has closed for her, which I think is a positive thing. But I haven't had the opportunity to consult with a lawyer yet. Emotions overwhelmed me, tears flowed down my face, and I plunged back into the abyss of depression and anger. Yesterday's revelations were painful to hear, and to tell the truth, I could live without knowing this painful reality. Now it dawns on me that she could have invented everything, resorted to lies to form a story. 
It's hard to say for sure, but as it turned out, it completely coincides with everything that I managed to put together over the past month. And that's exactly how things are at the moment. It's like an endless loop. I go through a few good days recuperating, and then another setback happens. It seems that the time has stretched for months, but in fact, it is only a few days. Despite all this, I will try to get some sleep. Imagine that the person you consider the love of your life, the only woman you've ever loved or kissed, admits that she cheated on you for more than four years simply because she was bored. It wasn't the result of falling out of love or estranging from each other, there were no problems or lack of intimacy in their relationship. It was just because she was bored. I'm not sure if this makes the situation worse or better. And now, more than a year has passed, and I want to say that the divorce was difficult for me. I presented to my lawyer a confession of a long-term affair, which I recorded when we were talking in the car. I did it in secret from her so that I would have proof. Her tantrum in court made me very angry, and I restrained my anger with difficulty. My already ex-wife blamed me for everything, according to her, it was I who was guilty of the fact that she had committed treason. As a result, I received full custody of our children, our house, and child support, which she will pay until they reach adulthood. Now I know that she lives in a small apartment that she rents. Recently, she called her younger daughter and asked to visit her in the hospital. As it turned out later, my ex-wife has breast cancer. She desperately asked her daughter that I visit her at parting. Apparently, she feels that she doesn't have long to live, but I categorically refuse to see someone. I don't want to see her anymore. I want to restore my life and no longer think about what this lying woman did to us. Story 2 Let me share my story. I am a middle-aged man, I am 57 years old, and I have been married to my wife for almost three decades. Throughout this time, our marriage was harmonious without serious hesitation because we had common interests and values. Our joint life path was also blessed by two adult children, 27 and 24 years old, who achieved success in life. But on one fateful day, June 17th, my world was destroyed when my wife unexpectedly announced her unhappiness and desire to divorce. To my surprise, she told me that for the last year and a half, she had been having an affair with another person, which she cleverly hid under the guise of communicating with friends. Soon, she decided to move, and is currently living with her new partner. I noticed several disturbing signs, for example, her insecure behavior during telephone conversations, but I chose not to pay attention to them. She very skillfully kept her two lives separate from each other, even to the point that she did not use travel tickets to hide her trips to him in another state. As a result, I was devastated. It's hard for me to sleep, I'm losing weight, and this negatively affects my overall health. My wife has no sense of guilt, and even her family, who used to be close to me, took my side. My children were a source of support for me, and they were very disappointed in their mother. I can't imagine a future with her, despite the fact that we amicably divided the property. I suspect that she pursues exclusively her own interests. Currently, my main task is to restore my well-being and find inner peace. Currently, we communicate mainly by email. From the latest news, I found out about the identity of another man through my mother-in-law. Interestingly, he and my wife have been colleagues for more than 20 years, although she quit this job for years ago. Although sometimes they worked in the same department, by the end of their service life, it seemed that they were employees of the same department. It is worth noting that for the last four years, they have not been colleagues at work. In addition, there is a small group of six to eight former colleagues, including my wife's lover and his own wife, who sometimes get together. When their children were young, we went to amusement parks together. I joined them on these trips about eight to ten years ago. Since the divorce of her lover and his wife, during this time, my wife listened to her colleague and offered support when he was at work. Initially, it seems to me their relationship was purely friendly, but I have a suspicion that during one of these meetings, my wife could express her dissatisfaction with our marriage, and he, who himself survived the divorce, supported her. Gradually, this could lead to longer conversations and ultimately to an affair. In terms of level, style, and appearance for her age, she is usually considered not to his taste, but he managed to take advantage of the opportunity and manipulating her emotions made her feel his importance and attractiveness. As for him and me, we could not be more different in terms of political views, religion, and values. 
I have often heard the saying that people tend to have affairs with those who are below them in status, and in this particular situation, it seems that this is indeed the case. It's hard not to wonder why she decided to leave me for this man. This affair is much more confusing than usual, mainly because of their long history and close connection, which makes it even more difficult to perceive. Living together in daily close communication take our engagement to a new level. Today was not the best day for me. I can't stop thinking that I didn't have a chance to save our relationship even before the affair happened. She said she felt unhappy, but we never had a serious conversation about it. There were still many positive aspects in our relationship back then, and I would have done everything to improve our communication, contact a therapist, or consider other options. I don't know how to express my emotions, and I tend to be more restrained. I have long since come to terms with the fact that our closeness is not as strong as it used to be. This suited me perfectly because I loved her very much and unshakably believed in the power of true love. But today, I miss her presence. Unfortunately, events did not develop as we would like, taking an unexpected turn. The financial issues were resolved smoothly, and she came to the house for a short time to pick up some things. I kept calm and had minimal conversation, thinking about the future of the house. I decided to stay here for the next six to eight months, giving myself enough time to decide whether to leave it or not. The discussion at home served as a reminder of the complexity of our situation. She suggested the idea of spending Christmas with the four of us, and I was shocked by her suggestion. I calmly told her that she had to make a decision either to be my beloved, faithful, and devoted wife, or to completely leave my life so that I could heal and move on. It was clear to both of us that she was not choosing the first option, leaving no room for compromise. This revelation brought her to tears, but I didn't say anything. Since her new partner is Jewish, there will be no celebration of Christmas in their family, despite her deep attachment to this holiday. It seems to me that she gradually realizes the scale of her mistake and the illusion she created begins to crumble. It surprises me that she thought she could get both, although I understand perfectly well that this is a strategy often used by scammers. It is obvious that she left without hesitation just a month ago. It seems that today, her new partner will have a hard time. The positive thing is that she mentioned her intention to start therapy, which is a step in the right direction. I sincerely hope this will bring her some relief. Unfortunately, I had a restless sleep, which only added to the difficulties of my day, as I had to attend my uncle's funeral. Few funerals, even if a person is well-rested, can be emotionally exhausting. My aunt's tears today were truly heartbreaking. She lost a wonderful man who was incredibly compassionate and loving. Now, when she turns 86, I am increasingly worried that she will not leave my uncle for long. During the funeral, I had the opportunity to see the widow of my cousin, who tragically lost her husband to cancer 10 years ago when he was only 50 years old. As a child, he was like an older brother to me, and she is really an extraordinary person who is grieving the loss of a wonderful husband and father. This meeting made me think that both these wonderful women would give anything to get their spouses back and emphasize the great love and adoration they felt for them. This was in stark contrast to my own situation when my wife had the same great love and unwavering devotion. Unfortunately, she chose to give it up. But this meeting with relatives was a reminder to me of how important it is to maintain close ties, especially since my sisters live far away. Therefore, I intend to strengthen ties with my relatives so that distance does not interfere with our relationship. I really appreciate that there are people like them in my life. When we were returning home, my sister told me about a conversation she had with one of our cousins about my wife. Although I didn't have a close relationship with her, she always seemed distant to me. It seems that other people treat her the same way. Today, I had a meeting with my wife to discuss a settlement agreement. In order not to go into details, I can say with confidence that I have achieved a favorable result that exceeded my initial expectations. She agreed to almost everything, leaving only one minor point for negotiations. I was surprised by her surprise when I started the divorce process. After all, she was the first to talk about the divorce on that fateful day, but she did not wait for an answer. Living in a state of uncertainty with my wife, who was attracted to another man, became unbearable for me. Strangely, today she looked unusually cheerful and talkative, which was different from her usual reserved demeanor. It seemed strange to me, so I tried to stay calm and detached. Without any prompting on my part, she made it clear that she had gone to her lover. 
At the same time, the strained relationship with one of our sons continued to bother her, and a void of silence formed between them. It seems that my wife has reached the limit in her relationship with her parents, and so have the parents themselves. Apparently, she visited her brother over the weekend. As expected, she mentioned that she had not received any contact from her second brother. Although recently, my sister-in-law contacted me to find out about my well-being. The most difficult thing is that I haven't seen my daughter-in-law for a whole month, and despite all the pain today's meeting with her caused me, a storm of emotions. My wife looked beautiful today, which only increased the heartache. It was hard not to see the woman I once saw her with, especially since she was unusually kind today. I try to remind myself of her actions, but it turns out to be quite difficult. Tonight, I am experiencing emotional difficulties. I am overcome with depression, which has been happening infrequently lately. The circumstances surrounding me are just unpleasant, there is nothing special or new. I'm still trying to improve my sleep and fight stress. Fortunately, my family continues to provide me with great support, especially my sisters, who are constantly ready to talk heart to heart. Unexpectedly, a few days ago, after breaking many weeks of silence, my wife contacted me and shared a link to an article about our friend who had recently encountered legal problems. Her message simply said, thought you might be interested. The considered situation sheds light on one of the disadvantages of love relationships between people aged about 50 years, the lack of a common history. The person involved in this novel does not know about the important moments of her life and cannot discuss them with her. Although I had prepared a snide response acknowledging that there are unreliable people in the world, I made the wise decision not to make contact. My lawyer informed me that he would most likely deliver the divorce papers to her within the next week. Although certified mail is a possible way, my lawyer has encountered difficulties in returning these postcards. I find some consolation in the fact that the papers will be delivered to her doorstep by a bailiff. Although I could offer to hand over the documents at her workplace, I am afraid that this may upset her, and I must remain calm. Since we have now concluded a fundamentally beneficial settlement agreement, my wife tends to get very upset when something bothers her. Although I cannot say that I am looking forward to the upcoming holidays with horror, I foresee emotional problems that may arise. The festive season will inevitably bring back a flood of memories, especially when it comes to our collection of Christmas decorations. Each piece of jewelry keeps its own story, serves as a memory of the places we visited together. But the holidays are still far away. Now I'm thinking about what to do in this situation. Previously, decorating a Christmas tree was a cherished family activity, and it's hard for me to imagine having to deal with all these things and share them with my wife. As for sleep, I am grateful for all the suggestions I received and have experimented with numerous methods. The problem is that I fall asleep as a rule easily within 10 minutes, but closer to tonight, there are difficulties. At the age of 57, I am faced with the need to get up once a night, and when this inevitably happens, I hardly go back to sleep. It can be 2 a.m., 3 a.m., or any other time. I decided to close the clock because it is very unpleasant for me to know the time during that period of the night when I try to fall asleep. I periodically break down and see obsessive dreams from which I then wake up. I plan to discuss this issue with my therapist in the coming week and hope that the sleep specialist will be able to offer further help. On the 30th, coping with COVID was not so scary, it was akin to a severe cold. I feel pretty good today. When I was ill about a year ago, I was very tired and was a little worse. This time, I decided to take the test as I spent time with my mother-in-law and father-in-law on Saturday. Surprisingly, my sleep has improved a little over the last few nights. Perhaps the illness had some positive effect. And one more remark, my eldest child finally talked to my wife. She called him, but he missed the call and called her back later. Unfortunately, the conversation didn't go well. He was at my house, talking in the backyard, and I unwittingly overheard a lot with the windows open. He was aggressive with her, but she still showed no sympathy for what I had to go through. After that, he told me that their conversation had moved from her unrestrained tears to an almost detached behavior, as if she was reading from a rehearsed script or being coached. He noticed that she used a lot of swear words, and her noticeable mood swings during the conversation gave the impression that she was on the verge of losing control. Therefore, he does not want to communicate with her anymore in the near future. 
My mother-in-law called me last night and told me that she was very concerned about the well-being of my father-in-law, who is in the hospital due to a blocked kidney. She probably assumes that my wife will eventually find out about it from her brothers and sisters. Lately, I've noticed that my father-in-law is unusually silent about all this. She noted that he was in great internal pain, and I can see that too. He seems to have aged a lot in the last three months. I sincerely hope that he will be all right. Now I am overwhelmed with sadness. I cannot realize the scale of the unforeseen consequences of this situation. It seems that the consequences will be very large scale and long term. My wife has never expressed her displeasure to me. There were absolutely no signs, no quarrels, no cold attitude. Outwardly, everything looked completely normal. Often, people who are happily married change, as a rule, because of a significant flaw, and the traitor, even if she really felt unhappy, I can't read minds. Of course, there were times when she became sullen, but this was invariably throughout the 30 years of our life together. I often woke up early to pamper her with fishing, often returned home before the start of her working day, so I never put my time ahead of her. I have made many attempts to find ways to communicate and spend quality time together, but it seemed incredibly difficult. It seemed to me that this was not an easy task because her interests are limited to shopping, watching TV, and playing golf. Recently, my sister touched on an interesting topic that shed light on the situation in which my wife found herself, the combination of caring for both sons, COVID restrictions, conflicts in the family and at work, increased alcohol consumption, and the onset of menopause proved too much for her. In mid-2020, shortly after my youngest son left for college, she started spending more time with her former colleagues, including the same man. I didn't think much of it at the time, but that's when things started to change. We are well aware of how easy it is to slip into an emotional affair, especially with a person who is a reliable confidant. During the divorce, the pattern of events leading to such a situation is practically predictable. If we talk about the unique features of her personality, then we can distinguish several that significantly affect her behavior. Firstly, she is sure that she can never be wrong. This way of thinking largely determines her unwillingness to admit her wrongness and unshakable stubbornness, even when our son pointed out to her the wrongness of her actions, to which she simply rejected it as his opinion. Secondly, she seeks to avoid conflicts at all costs. Perhaps an explanation can be found for why she never expressed her dissatisfaction. From my point of view, this is not the most mature approach to solving problems in a relationship. It's hard for me to understand how our views on the state of marriage could be so different. Instead of facing the problem face to face, she chose an easier and cowardly path, which caused me significant emotional, physical, and mental damage. What is even more surprising is that she confessed to her brother and sister that she was going to leave a year ago. Then why didn't she do it? Let me shed some light on this issue. It looked like she wasn't completely ready for a clean break. I was the only person present when she suddenly and abruptly dropped the bomb, throwing me away. I've never seen such intense hostility before. It's amazing how quickly she changed her behavior, and right after we had a normal lunch together. I was in a state of shock, sprawled on the couch, and she just walked past me to do the laundry. This behavior indicates sociopathy. There was no attempt on her part to comfort or show remorse. During the whole night, I couldn't fall asleep while she was sleeping soundly in my son's previous room. At some point, I started looking for sedatives to fall asleep. It looks like she overheard me because the next morning when she heard that I was taking out pills, she said she was worried. But her concern was so superficial that she didn't bother to check if I was trying to take an excessive dose. Spare me the insincere worry, that's the kind of person I'm dealing with right now. When it comes to her parents and our sons, it is important to recognize that no one has a full understanding of the difficulties in this family. Despite the information I have shared, her parents have their own problems. Firstly, her father is a very principled man who hardly experiences the fact that she entered into a long extramarital affair and then hurt me even more by deciding to live with another person on D-Day, and all this at a time when we were still married. He saw in her who she really is, a person who is used to lying and manipulating others. Her mother shares this opinion, but besides, she cannot forgive my wife for the fact that she callously and abruptly abandoned me, treating me like a disposable thing. 
I am very delighted that my mother-in-law did not succumb to the opinion of the inviability of family ties and did not try to rationalize her daughter's act. Instead, they took a principled position, which is really commendable. In fact, they believed that their daughter's behavior was terrible, which led them to make an independent decision to break off their relationship with her. Recently, my wife missed the opportunity to contact her father and find out about his health while he was in the hospital, which could have been a reason to restore their relationship, but she didn't put any effort into it. When someone crosses her path, she tends to ignore them completely. During our last conversation on this topic, which took place about seven weeks ago, she mentioned that they had her contact information. As for my sons, they now perceive her as an absolute hypocrite. As a result, they completely lost respect for her, and it would be fair if she faced the consequences of a strained relationship with them. It is very important to understand that actions always have consequences, and this was obvious even before my senior finally spoke to her last week. She made a minimum of effort, often sending random messages that had no connection with reality. On the contrary, I was ready to go to great lengths to restore relations with children, even if it meant crawling on broken glass. But she was too busy living in a fantasy world. Whenever she complained to her brother about the situation, her attention was always focused on how it affected her, completely oblivious to how her actions of her own free will hurt their father and what her children might feel. Here is another example that perfectly shows her egocentrism. My eldest son moved into a new apartment in June last year and repeatedly invited her to visit and for dinner. Perhaps that evening when I was not at work, she refused the meeting. Now the truth has become clear to me, on those nights when I was not at home, she was carried away by her lover. This selfish act caused him great pain. Ultimately, she made a terrible decision and now has to deal with its consequences, putting her own happiness at the forefront not caring about others. She showed egocentrism, pride, and resentment. Neither my sons nor her parents demand that she stay married and be unhappy. If I took her back, I would lose the respect of all these people, and this is more important to me than anything else. I treasured my vows very much and was completely devoted to them. It is quite natural that people face moments of unhappiness, especially after 30 years, when the initial strong love may weaken but it seems that the concept of mature love requiring respect and dedication did not find a response in her soul. She was unable to make the emotional efforts necessary for personal growth. Instead, she behaves like a 16-year-old teenager experiencing her first crush, committing excessive alcohol consumption, and other immature acts that used to be characteristic of her. This is simply absurd, especially considering her outrageous statement on D-Day that we are simply incompatible. Are you only realizing this now throughout all the years of raising children, maintaining our family, and providing them with a quality education? I was absolutely compatible. I have devoted countless nights to work, always putting the well-being of my loved ones at the forefront. Unfortunately, it was during these business trips where infidelity lurks, that treason lies, and meanness took place. Surprisingly, I didn't even think about such actions. Now my wife has shown herself as a person who lacks maturity, who shows self-esteem, and has a selfish character. Forgiveness and oblivion will undoubtedly be a long process, and the preservation of friendly relations is out of the question. I refuse to build any kind of relationship with the person who treated me the way she did. As for other people, they can soar out the complexities of their connections in their own way. My son clearly spoke to her on the phone, expressing his concern about my mental health and the negative impact she has on me, including depression, insomnia, and anxiety. He diligently checks on me daily and tries to see me at least once a week. But she showed neither care nor attention. When a person is devoid of empathy and ignores the sincere concern of a son for the well-being of his father, she deserves any criticism in her address. Such actions clearly define them as morally inferior people. It seems that my sleep has improved a little over the past week. Today was filled with a lot of emotions. My eldest son recently got a wonderful job with a significant salary increase, and today he moved to prepare for the start of work next Monday. It's a bittersweet moment. In a short period of time, he managed to do everything from terminating the lease agreement to finding a new place and collecting things. His new place of work is in Boston, about six hours away from here, whereas before he got to me in just 45 minutes. We had a wonderful dinner together last night. 
I'm incredibly grateful to my two sons for their presence and support in everything that has happened. We don't go into details because I think it's not their burden. They are just there for me, providing constant support every day. My eldest son calls and asks about my well-being, especially sleep. He shares small fragments of positivity to lift my mood. I can't express how much these gestures mean to me. Recently, I had to drop something off at my mother-in-law's house, and to my surprise, my mother-in-law spontaneously mentioned that both my boys had repeatedly noted what a wonderful father I had been over the years. Maybe she has some kind of anger at my wife. At the same time, she added that no one had ever said the same thing about her. As for the divorce, no new information has been received about it. Now it has become a waiting game. I have decided not to make contact and currently see no reason to stop it. I accept every day as it comes in the process of my healing. Others note that they notice small improvements in me, although I personally do not feel that I have made a significant breakthrough yet. Subconsciously, my wife still occupies a significant part of my thoughts, but I am actively working to gradually displace these thoughts. I fully understand how emotionally vulnerable I am. Still, today turned out to be a particularly difficult day for me. Today marks the 30th anniversary of our wedding, and I am very much fixated on this, which weighs on me. When I took the oath on that special day, I sincerely put every word into it, but it seems that my wife did not share this aspiration. Unfortunately, because of this, my sleep has worsened again as all thoughts consume me. However, today I have a glimmer of hope. My youngest will join me for dinner to distract me from these thoughts. I am desperately looking for solace and happiness in any occupation, but an irresistible feeling of emptiness does not leave me. From the latest news, a pleasant surprise, my second sister confirmed her participation in the Thanksgiving celebration. It gives me joy when all my loved ones gather around me on this special occasion. But my wife, not knowing about my eldest son's new job, wrote him a message with the intention of cooking Thanksgiving dinner for him in Massachusetts. He kindly informed her that he would be joining us instead, and that seemed to hurt her a lot. Unfortunately, it is expected that the situation will only worsen at Christmas because then she will not have the opportunity to see any of them. The consequences of her act are rapidly accumulating, causing irreparable damage to our family. Once the genie has escaped from captivity, it becomes impossible to bring him back. I understand perfectly well that selfishness is the defining trait of deceivers, but it amazes me that they do not realize the consequences of their actions. Maybe they just don't know how to take care of themselves. On the other hand, this week I am starting a course of therapy in the hope of coping with the trauma I have experienced. I'm optimistic that it can bring healing. Greetings to everyone. It has been quite a long time since our last communication, so I decided to provide a brief update. My divorce was officially finalized shortly after the start of the year, and now my life is on an upward trajectory. My relationship with my sons remains strong, and we continue to cherish our relationship. We don't attach any importance to it anymore since I don't think about it anymore. Since December, I have not been in contact with my ex and completely got rid of thoughts about her. At the end of December, after completing the course of therapy, I asked my therapist to express his opinion about dating. She confirmed that I was ready based on detailed conversations about my state of mind, in particular about my ex. I have carefully considered this advice, discussed it with my sisters and even with my sons. As a result, in mid-February, I decided to take a step forward and join a dating group. Given the importance of my faith, I'm dating one woman. After several dates with others, progress has been positive because we are not in a hurry. What really amazes me is the stark contrast in communication compared to my ex-wife. We have already touched on complex and important topics of relationships even in the early stages. These are conversations that my ex and I never had but they had to be. When I told my son about this, he jokingly remarked that this new woman did not look like a brick wall, perhaps hinting that his mother found it difficult to open up to others. Therapy has played an important role in my development, especially in developing communication skills, understanding boundaries, and managing expectations. The woman I'm dating now recommended the book The Five Love Languages to me, and she really opened my eyes. Remembering my past relationships, I realized that my ex and I did not coincide in understanding the languages of love and could not satisfy each other's needs. Although now I doubt whether I met her needs, but due to the lack of openness on her part, 
it is difficult to determine what those needs were. Fortunately, the woman I'm dating now and I have a strong sense of self-awareness, which greatly contributes to our effective communication. I have developed the ability to recognize narcissistic traits and identify red flags, and I carefully observe the dynamics of our relationship. In this regard, it is worth noting that she directly said that I should contact her if something I am doing causes me concerns, and we will solve them in an adult way. That was very nice to hear. If someone had told me last summer that I would be in the position I am in now, I would have treated it as something incredible. Despite the fact that therapy was quite expensive and required me to do double work for some time, it was a good investment. No matter how my relationship develops, I have undoubtedly grown as a person through this process. Therapy has done wonders for me, easing the trauma I experienced and providing me with the necessary tools to become a better partner, make wiser choices, and no longer tolerate unhealthy behavior. Even the subtle silence I received from my ex-wife from time to time reminded me of how easy it would be to solve any problems that cause serious concerns in our marriage given the appropriate opportunities. It's a pity she didn't understand that currently, I don't feel able to make a significant contribution because the thought of cheating is not something I would like to do. Recently, I decided that I want to live together with a woman who has become closer to me than my ex-wife once was, and recently she moved in with me, and it makes me very happy. Life seemed to get better. But one fine evening when my life partner and I were watching a soulful movie, the doorbell rang at my house. I was confused, knowing that we never expected a visit. And when I opened the door, I was shocked. I was probably so surprised that the expression on my face scared Amanda, my woman, and she came up to me. We stood and looked at my ex-wife with a suitcase in her hands, her face tear-stained. Amanda and I looked at each other, not knowing what to say. Seeing Amanda with me, my ex-wife behaved unreasonably. She started accusing me of betrayal and making terrible comments about Amanda. I was shocked. This lying, selfish cheater had such audacity that she came to my house after she betrayed and abandoned me. I did not expect such impudence and stupidity on her part. I closed the door in her face without saying a word. As a result, my ex-wife started knocking on the door and shouting loudly, insulting me. I had no choice but to call the police. For 15 minutes while we were waiting for the police officers, she asked me to let her in, told me how much she loved me, that she had made a stupid mistake, and was ready to fix everything. Listening to everything she says, I felt a huge relief, realizing that she finally realized how terrible she had done. When the police arrived, I opened the door and explained everything to the staff, after which she was taken away. The next day, my sons called me and told me that their mother had asked them for shelter, but they advised her to go to the one for whom she had exchanged us all. As it turned out later, the man to whom she left me put her out on the street after finding a younger and kinder woman. I hope my ex-wife realized how terrible she did betraying me and exchanging our family for a lover. Story 3 My wife and I have been happily married since 2001, and our journey together began in 1999. Throughout all these years, I have always considered myself incredibly lucky to have met and married such an intelligent, attentive, caring, and loyal woman. She is not only beautiful externally and internally but also admired by other men. During our marriage, she always gracefully displayed their courtship. Earlier this year, she received the sad news that she had been diagnosed with stage 1 uterine cancer, but we did not lose optimism because the cancer was detected at an early stage, and she successfully underwent a complex hysterectomy after which she fully recovered. During her recovery, I took a leave of absence to provide her with the necessary care and support. Although there were several expected emotional moments, we overcame them together as a single team. After recovering, she expressed a strong desire for us to live life to the fullest, and this led us to incredible adventures. We went on a 10-day trip to Europe and then made an unforgettable trip to Bora Bora. At the end of the year, we plan to go to the UK, Spain, and Portugal. I cherish every moment of these impressions, realizing that they are the result of her new understanding of life after encountering fragility. In addition, she took up yoga, swimming, and cooking full-fledged food, giving priority to her overall well-being. And yet, last week, a situation arose that made me experience conflicting feelings. When she came home from work, she said she wanted to get a temporary pass to explore her intimate life with someone other than me. She explained that after she was diagnosed with cancer, her outlook on life changed, 
and she no longer wants to feel limited in realizing her desires. She had one colleague whom she had always been attracted to, and since he was leaving the company, she saw this as a great opportunity for a one-time meeting. Recognizing my right to refuse, she made it clear that she would always be angry and disappointed in me, calling my unwillingness a manifestation of toxic masculinity and self-doubt. Although I firmly believe in open communication, I expressed my concern about consent under duress, stressing that real consent cannot be achieved in such circumstances. In addition, I expressed my discomfort about how she describes my possible reaction to this key issue, which can significantly affect our marriage and life. The next morning, she apologized for putting such a difficult decision on me and decided to take matters into her own hands. She informed me that she had already booked a hotel for this man near the venue of her colleague's farewell party and intended to spend the night with him there. I think she understands that I may not be interested in knowing or asking about this situation, or maybe she just doesn't want to disclose it to me. In part, I accept that she has been honest with me so far, and given the difficulties she has faced since her cancer diagnosis, perhaps I should leave things as they are. I'm not aware of the extent of her struggle, so I can't ignore how it affected her mental state or outlook on life. On the other hand, I am inclined to categorically object to this idea and argue that this will not happen. But if that happens, then I'll have to deal with the consequences. Her friend accused me of being heartless for even suggesting that I wouldn't let her, claiming that I didn't understand her situation. It's hard for me to believe that she is willing to leave our more than 20 years of marriage for a man she knows only in a professional capacity, and I have a desire to contradict her. Maybe she feels the same way I do, and she won't put our marriage in danger because of an affair. I feel a mixture of sympathy and anger for her. Some part of me is interested in the personality of this person. What does he look like? What was it about him that fascinated her so much? Could he be a safe option for her? Is he married? Does his wife know about him? Would it be insensitive of me to refuse her request? What options do I have other than to leave? And now, the latest news. The last few days have been incredibly difficult. Of course, I hope that my disagreement with her plans would make her change her mind, but unfortunately, this did not happen. Then I expressed my firm refusal and admitted that I was not sure how I would feel if she continued. Again, she answered, this is for me. It will only be once. What can I do so that you can support me in this? You'll be fine. On Saturday, she left ostensibly to meet with colleagues, but in fact, to meet with her boyfriend colleague. I asked her to let me know when she was going to the bar and what time she would be there. Besides, he asked if she would do it. After receiving her answer, I decided not to ask any more questions for today. I'll definitely see her tomorrow. After that, I blocked my wife's phone. Then I made a choice that can be called either stupid or brilliant. I went to the bar where their meeting was going to take place. Well, not really to the bar, but to the bus stop opposite it, and there I waited, as it seemed to me, for quite a long time before the meeting. I could not get rid of the thought that I needed to find out who this person is, perhaps to compare myself with him and understand what qualities he lacks. I was on the verge of insanity, not understanding who he was and what was so unusual about him that my wife was ready to jeopardize our marriage for him. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, a man appeared whom I immediately recognized. I saw a taxi from which a group of people immediately got out. They warmly welcomed and hugged a man who looked like my wife's work colleague. My wife was nowhere to be seen, and I wondered if she had canceled her plans. I checked my phone, but I didn't find any messages. When everyone had said goodbye and dispersed, the man waited on the street for a few more minutes until finally, my wife appeared. She looked around, took his hand, and they walked away together. In the midst of the fear, sadness, and anger I felt, I was filled with disgust. This man was everything I couldn't compare to, short, plump, bald. I felt like a spectator watching from the sidelines. Determined, I followed them to the hotel, but eventually turned back and headed home. Once at home, I locked the bedroom door and moved her things to the spare room. There, I left a note asking her to find another place to live as soon as possible. After seeking advice from a lawyer I know, I found out about divorce lawyers and met with them from about 11 in the morning. My wife repeatedly called me, but I blocked her calls and sent them to voicemail. At first, I listened to a few of her messages, finding some satisfaction in her growing anxiety and frustration. 
not wanting to go home, I couldn't find a place to sleep. By 9 o'clock, I finally returned and, following the advice of a friend, began documenting what was happening. When I was going up the stairs, she came out of our common room and asked about what happened and would like to talk. I, believing that we had already discussed everything, just said that I didn't want to engage in any conversations this evening and went to bed. I ignored her questions so that she would eventually leave me alone. Deep down, I wished I had talked to her and closed the door, but looking into her eyes was unbearable. The following Monday, I returned to my usual lifestyle and went to work. My wife was waiting for me, hoping that we could discuss how to return to normal life. Reluctantly, I still had to refuse her. This week, I had appointments with lawyers recommended to me by my friend, but then I found out that one of the lawyers had left for a few days, leaving me alone with the reality that I would have to live with my wife all this time. I had no desire to go home and start any conversation, especially about our relationship. When I finally arrived home, I was ambushed by her friends and mother-in-law. The circumstances were such that I became a victim of their cruel attitude. The initiator was the wife's closest friend, and they all decided to protect her, saying something like this, she's been through so much. You can't understand what she's faced. You have no idea what it's like to face something like this. They tried to justify it as a one-time case, emphasizing that she at least confessed to me. They assured me that she would never see this man again. Then follow the words, you will be responsible for what she has been through over the past few days. I listened to their words with a smirk on my face, and when there was a pause in their anger, I asked if they had finished spreading this news to all our acquaintances. Then I calmly told them that I was going to meet with their husbands and tell them about how they verbally abused, humiliated, and even threatened me. They also tried to force me to stay with my wayward spouse by asking them to leave. I made it clear to them that they had no right to decide whether I would stay or not. Then my ex-wife, half-jokingly, half-seriously, apologized, saying that she was sorry about the situation. Then I explained the difference between regret and remorse. Regret is connected with cause and effect relationships, with the realization that life will never be the same again. Of course, there was no sense of remorse here. Our relationship will never be the same because of your complete and deliberate disregard of me and my desires. She asked if I had any questions no matter how disturbing they were. I replied that the only question I have is why she chose this unattractive and unsuitable man and why no one else at all. She admitted that cancer scares her very much, and it seems to her that she is in a hurry to die. The prospect of escaping through the exit from the dark tunnel seemed tempting to her. She explained that devoting so much time to me and our daughter, constantly worrying about her family, she wanted something exclusively for herself, to escape. She claimed that this man had been interested in her for a long time, and she knew that he would not refuse her. According to her, he was the complete opposite of me. In response, I objected that if I jeopardized my marriage, then this woman should be significantly superior to my spouse in all respects. At the same time, I reminded her that I had witnessed them leaving the bar together that evening, holding hands, and asked if there had been anything between them before. She admitted that this was not the case but suggested that it might not be true, to which I replied that after so many years of living together, her disrespect for me is simply amazing. In conclusion, I told her that if I endured such disrespect and stayed with her, I would never be able to look at myself in the mirror again. At the beginning of this week, hoping for a peaceful separation, I arranged a meeting with a lawyer. I once again asked my wife to find alternative accommodation, but she insisted that she was not going to leave and that we were not going to divorce. She assured me that she would give me the time and space necessary to restore the relationship and expressed confidence that we would overcome our problems. She suggested that I see a psychologist, but I refused, doubting the need for this because I believed that I had not done anything that would require therapy. In the end, I handed her an eviction notice from the house, emphasizing that it was my personal property. Since then, she moved in with her mother but began to visit me often and make desperate offers, for example, to enter into a free relationship. On my part, I rejected these constant attempts of hers and insisted that she asked for permission before coming to me. It looks like she finally realized that our relationship is really over. She talked about postponing the divorce but at the same time continued to behave inappropriately. The most unpleasant thing in this whole situation was to tell my daughter the news about the divorce and the reasons for its occurrence. Surprisingly, she begged me to give her mother another chance. 
I wonder if I would get the same attention if I changed. At the moment, I have nothing to report as we are in the process of divorce, but in our legal system, by law, we have to live separately for a year before the divorce is finalized. My potential ex-wife has offered to give me anything I want in a divorce if I agree to turn to family counselors, but I don't want to go down that path. As we resolve the financial issues related to the divorce, my position will not change. As for our property, the house is my personal property, so she has no rights to it. The only property she can potentially claim is my pension, cars, and a house by the sea, but I can object to that, considering she has been living in my house for free for more than 20 years and received an inheritance from her father. Of course, I could even support her financially by paying her a pension after the divorce, but this seems unlikely. My daughter doesn't quite agree with her mother's position. Although she had always been closer to her mother, she was very disappointed in her. At first, she was in shock and hoped that we could sort out our problems and stay together, but now she realizes that this is impossible. Despite attempts to limit communication with her daughter, she cannot deny the fact that she is still her mother. Husbands from the company of my wife's friends were upset that their wives were involved in aiding and abetting treason and were forced to interrupt communication with my wife, but now it seems that this has already been forgotten. The best friend took the initiative into her own hands, actively creating situations in which they had to enter into a relationship with her lover or at least encouraging it to such an extent that her husband began to doubt her intentions. It turned out that she never liked me at all, and this was her way of getting back at me. I think she succeeded. The husband of his best friend added that his wife had several explicit messages on her phone but assured me that he was coping with it. We met, he apologized for his wife's participation but I understand that he was not to blame, and now I just want to move on. Now I've decided to give up dating for a while, and I'm not going to get married anymore. During the divorce process, it turned out that my lying wife had repeatedly cheated on me. To be sure, I took a paternity test and found out the shocking news that my daughter wasn't really mine biologically, and I also took tests for sexually transmitted diseases, and syphilis was found in me. I was shocked by this news and did not know how to live on. Regardless of the fact that my daughter was not my own, I continue to sincerely love her, but as for syphilis, I have to be treated. My ex-wife was awarded a large fine for endangering my health. I also posted information on social networks that my unfaithful wife is sick, that she is contagious trash, and that from the very beginning of our marriage, she cheated on me. After this information, I'm not sure that her family and friends will want to keep in touch with her, but this is her problem, and I have to take care of my health.